Good morning and welcome to the garden on this nice fall Sunday morning. Glad you're here. Our prayer is that you will experience the love of God in and among this community of faith. I'm kind of digging the lights today. Do you notice the lights are a little less? I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Folks at home, are you okay with that? Just let Matthew know who's online if you're not okay with that. All right, well, we're glad you're here. Just a couple things I'd like to highlight before we start service. First of all, thanks to those who responded this week to the Lord's Pantry at Anna's house. We have a great start on volunteers for doing an extra dinner that will not be the responsibility of outreach. So we're going to try to put a different group together. So now at this point, outreach people, if you would like to be part of that, you are welcome to be a part of that. But um, we're going to do a dinner for um, Anna's house. Uh, details to follow, but we have enough people to volunteer, and that is great That for those who responded, so thank you very much. I want to remind you that there's a prayer. Uh, prayers are on your <clears throat> card here, um, and I just want to highlight our friend Emery Safford, a dear friend of the garden, has not been well, and he's at University Hospital, and uh, Emery always has a little joke for the pastor and he'll tell it, and he gets this little look on his face, and I love it. So uh, please keep Emery and Fran and Winnie. Winnie is uh, his sister-in-law in your prayer. So I know there are many others. Just include those on this paper. This past week, we realized that there is some folks that we don't have your information. We need your information. So fill this out this week. If you don't think we have your contact information, I promise we will not inundate you with Buy one, get one free, I promise. We will not do that. So another thing I'd like to highlight is as you leave today, oh, it's so exciting. Uh, welcome back, Hawk. Glad you're here. Um, it's so exciting. There's a questionnaire there that you get to fill out for next week's service. Ooh, all right, Leanne, I love you so much. Essentially, what we're doing next week after service is we're going to have a town hall. It's going to be facilitated by an outside facilitator who is going to encourage some conversation as we move into the next phase of the garden journey and the garden life. Do you realize we have been at Union Chapel for almost a year now? Just about a year. Actually, I think today is our one year. So... Um, we're going to just do a little exploration. Your GLT wants to find out what's going on out there. And then uh, we will have smaller groups meet to go over the questionnaire. So that's following service tomorrow or next week. I know you're very excited. Um, and like I said, we'll have an outside facilitator lead that. Uh, her name is Diane Zare, and she'll be here with Jerry Zare, who will be preaching and introducing us to his book, The Pathway to Peace. We have some copies of that available for $15 from the author. If you want to buy it today, they're available. If you want to take one today, it's available. Bring it back next week, and he will sign it. Leanne! Yes! What's happening? Oh, I, I love it. Um, I thought we were supposed to sing first, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay. Right? Are we? Are we supposed to we're sing gonna, first? We're going to sing after I'm done. <laughs> it's okay. I can't read. I can't ring. I can't read. It sure does say that. I'm muted, but not anymore. Okay, thank you. Woohoo! I know, I know, I know I don't need it. Thank you. You're absolutely right. So um, I volunteered Dave today that he was helping me. I got a bag. He's got a bag. Um, so this whole month, the kids and I have been talking about worry. And we learned about Joshua faced with a giant wall, also faced with uh, the promised land where the, everything, giants were big and tall, and there were grapes and all kinds of great things. And, and the 10 of the spies thought, no, we can't do it. But Joshua was like, don't be worried, right? So um, we're going to talk about worry again today, and this time we're in the New Testament. It seems like worry is, is, a, is a theme through the Bible, um, but Jesus made it very clear that worry weighs us down, right? So worry about food, right? And we're gonna worry about what I'm wearing. And we're worrying um, about school. Oh, 
right? Are they going to like me at school? And we're going to worry um, about, oh, those kids of mine, right? And we're worrying, <laughs> what's wrong? It's getting heavy. It's getting heavy, right? Yeah. And we're going to worry all about, you know, paying those bills. And we're worried, and we're just worried, because that's what we do. Now, I'm going to ask you, um, I need you to run up and down the aisle <laughs> with that bag. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. So notice what he's doing. It's not an easy feat. Right? Nope. It's, he's carrying it around. He's a little bent over. Should have let him see. Yeah. First. Oh, look. Jameson's trying to help. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hard. Oh, thank you. Oh, he even got help. Nice. Whoo! It's, it's very heavy. Come on, Dave. Do your part. Come on. Oh. Oh man. Oh. Well, you know what, Jameson? That's okay. Because here's what we do. Jesus said, "Don't worry. Give everything to God." The birds in the sky don't worry about when their next meal comes. God takes care of them. Those, those flowers in the field, they don't worry what they're going to wear. They, God takes care of them. Are you not more important than they are? So what do we do? We pray. Okay. Jesus, take away that worry of my health. Jesus, take away that worry of school. Jesus, take away that worry about where my next meal comes from. Jesus, take away that worry about when I'm going to eat. Jesus, take away that worry about work. And Jesus, take away that worry about kids. And what happens? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Right? Now. I feel free. Now run. Yeah. Much easier. So downstairs, we're going to talk about worry. And we're going to let it go. And we're painting birdhouses that kids can take home to remind them that even the birds in the sky don't worry. So are you ready, guys? Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go. You know what? Dave, you have a plan for how you deal with worry. I'm going to sing about it. All right. Come on. Thank you. 
they have an opportunity to kind of even sing with us because these songs today are like hymns and they're easy to learn and so we'll be listening for you as well. Last week we got into the reset and today we're going to talk about restarting. What does it take to have a fresh restart? In the Bible they call it renewal. What do we need for renewal? Welcome, we're glad you're here. Universal words of welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Salam. Salam. Namaste. Namaste. Peace. 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 As Carolyn already said, she's going to be talking about restarting today. Whether it's a restart or a fresh start over, why is it that starting over is so difficult? For me, it implies doing something again, something that maybe I've done before. And whatever that situation is for you, possibly it might imply that something went wrong the first time, which may or may not be true. If you failed at something, and may not, you may not know how to start again or what those things to do to start again are. It's hard because you have to hit that reset button in order to go through what you already went through. It implies that you may encounter some obstacles or, that you've already overcome before. If we could only see the future, wouldn't that be great? We would know what to do. Going back to square one and knowing what to do is generally not expected or very exciting. Life goes on for us and we think we're doing just great and then bam, everything changes and we are not in control anymore. In truth, we never really were in control, but we always like to be in control and we think we are. If only we could see that future then it would be so much easier. When considering a restart, don't be afraid to hit that restart button. If you had the strength and determination to do something before, know that you have learned from it. With learning comes strength, and whatever your situation is, whether it's a job issue, a relationship issue, COVID, know that you have survived that and you can do something again, either the same way or a new way. Trust yourself, refuse to be afraid, overcome your fears because you are tougher than you think. Will you pray with me? Dear God, give me the courage to begin again, to overlook the difficulties, to overcome the obstacles and to stay open to the moment as best I can. Help me to be patient enough to know it takes time to start over and wise enough to ask for help from friends and family when you need it. Also give me eyes to see the need in others so that I may be that helping friend when they need me. As I look to the future, may I reflect on the past and remember the lessons it's taught me. And God, may I always look to you for strength and guidance. Lord, you know the things that are crowding my heart a bit today. 
and I give you every worry, every burden, every detail that's weighing heavily on my heart. Thank you that I don't have to do life this week or this day on my own power. Thank you that I get to walk with you moment by moment. Thank you for carrying my burdens. Thank you for the gift of getting to bring every burden to you in prayer and for the opportunities to restart my situation with whatever you have planned for me. Let me always lean on you. Amen. The band is preaching today, aren't they? Woo! I don't know if you can, can you feel that spirit. Mm -mm -mm. 
so beautiful. Let's hope I don't mess that up. All right. Today, as we talk about restarts, I want to share something. The Garden Leadership Team met last week and um, kind of formed a new uh, mission vision statement for you that has been in the works for many, 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 many months. Uh, the other one was a little cattywampus, and um, this is beautiful. So our vision is to create and inspire goodness in the world to create and inspire goodness in the world. And our mission is to share in the journey of spiritual exploration through creativity, compassion, and care. And our tagline is still, many paths, one purpose. Today I'm going to look at a scripture text uh, that's in addition to what you find in your uh, program there. Um, I'm going to spend a little time with Nehemiah, so if you're a Bible reader, you might want to open up. It's just the first chapter, but we're going to look at a couple of texts. Isaiah is our centering text. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. And then this, from Paul's letter to the Romans, he says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, I want to note that uh, these two messages, the past two weeks, Reset and Restart, were designed for a younger group of people in uh, Delaware. And you may not think as a retired person that this really uh, pertains to you, but I want to tell you, I can guarantee you that this message is for someone in your life, if not for you. So I want to encourage you to listen, to listen with whoever it is that might be on your heart today. I want to note that there is a lot going on in the world that you may not be aware of, that there are people quietly quitting their jobs, that there are others who have not returned to the office since the pandemic. Life uh, before the pandemic has not returned to normal for many. Do you know that there are many who have not left their homes? There, there's a study that was done. Even though we're in endemic now, there are people who are still living in their homes and have not left. And we've made it easy for them to do that. Chances are you have someone younger in your life that does not have a faith community or a faith practice, and they are struggling right now. They're struggling with depression and anxiety and addiction and loneliness. All these things are on the rise, and particularly with young adults. I want to encourage you to listen today, not necessarily for yourself, but for someone in your life who might be struggling post-pandemic. Consider using this message as a way into conversation. Will you pray with me? God, take my mind and think through it, my lips and speak through them. Take my heart and set it on fire. Amen. When I was a freshman in college, I had a car. I was the envy of all of my classmates as I hit the Butler campus in a 1972 Ford Pinto hatchback. <laughs> oh, it gets better. That Christmas, I came home and my dad had gotten some new machine that allowed him to paint and he decided he wanted to paint my car. Now keep in mind, the floorboards were completely rusted out. But he wanted to paint my car, and as my dad does, and I know he's watching, he went and found the cheapest paint that he could find to put on this car, and it just happened to be banana yellow. Yeah, yeah. So then not only did my classmates want to be me, oh, they always knew when I was anywhere near them. And it was that season that my Ford Pinto became Chica, because she looked just like a Chica, cheetah banana. Now, Chica had a few years and a few miles on her, and while she was a little temperamental in her old age, you had to be really gentle with her, because if you shut her down and then you tried to restart her too soon, uh, she didn't like that. See, to restart Chica took some real TLC, and if you didn't get it just right, of course, she would flood. These are all things that kids today have no idea. Well, we're going to teach you something today. She would flood, and if she flooded, you had to take some really specific steps to get her restarted. 
And those steps are as follows. First, you start by lifting the hood. Then you take the lid off of this thing called a carburetor. And you wipe out all of that stuff that has gotten into the carburetor. You wipe it out, you clean it out, you clean it out real good. Then you take this amazing tool called a pencil. And you put it into the butterfly wheel. Come on, amen. Can I get some amens? How many of us did this, right? And then you put that in there. You kept the hood up. And the next thing you did was the most important thing. You prayed like mad. You prayed like mad because if you tried to do this process too soon, she would not start. So you prayed like mad. And then, and only then, would Chica restart. Today, we're talking about restarting and finding a new normal. And in some ways, I'm wondering if we too, like my sweet Chica, um, in order to truly restart, we have to find some steps to do that. In her book, Restart, psychologist Doreen Doggin McGee uh, takes a look at what normal post-pandemic future looks like and it may consist of. She starts by explaining how grief has made its way into the pandemic. And we all are grieving in one way or another. She says it's important for us to identify the grief and process this through naming and claiming, accepting and committing. Hmm, sounds a little bit like what your pastor said last week. She notes that losses move beyond human life. Those losses include the loss of normalcy, routine, and expectation. She recommends steps to help her readers overcome this grief, which they need to name as grief, by taking stock on how you reacted at the beginning of the pandemic, at the beginning of the quarantine, and how you were affected, going back there, socially, emotionally, and I would add spiritually. She also notes that the impact is lasting, and it's still not over. I mean, think about it. Just this past week, right, the news outlets were reporting that the cruise travel uh, world is getting back to normal and you can get on a cruise again. And the airlines, still not back to normal, right? Still not before pandemic. So we're not over this. And let me tell you, all you have to do is look at the kids in your life and young adults to see that the pandemic isn't over. Many people are still trying to overcome the losses that have been hard to name. The losses, the loss in education, the loss of rites of passage from prom to walking through graduation and starting college with a classmate. Think about all the classmates that you met your first day of college. That did not happen for these kids. Do you know this is the most fascinating thing? that we have a group of kids who have only ever been to school in masks. And there is this new situation with kids who do not want to take their mask off. In their masks, they find safety, they find security. And their parents cannot get them to take the mask off. The pandemic is still having an impact in the world. It's important for all of us to create some space and to look back on life and to reflect on what has happened, not only for ourselves, but for one another. We need to realize we're all processing the pandemic in different ways, people from different generations, different economic realities, and our geographical positioning are all impacting how we process the pandemic. It's important as individuals and as communities to recognize our perspective is not the only perspective. We may see that our restart happened some time ago, but the truth is we're not all in this position. Some are still at home. Some are still out of work. Some have moved out and about. We're not all in the same place. The important thing to note here is that we have to walk this journey with one another with no expectations that you're going to be where I am. We have to find ways to love one another and to find a way to talk to one another through this. In the Old Testament book, uh, Nehemiah is witness to a community dealing with one of these restarts. 
The uh, Jewish people have been held captive, the temple was ruined, and the walls of the city have come down. They have just been put into a position where they can have a fresh restart, and Nehemiah is ready for that fresh restart until, and we read this in the book of Nehemiah's, one of my brothers, this is Nehemiah, had just arrived from Judah with some fellow Jews. I asked them about the conditions among the Jews uh, there who had survived the exile in Jerusalem. They told me the exile survivors who, had, who are left, they're in the providence, well, they're in bad shape. Conditions are appalling. The wall of Jerusalem is still in rubble. The city gates are still cinders. So he listens and hears that it's not what he thinks it is. Well, when I heard this, I sat down and I wept, he says. I mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Then I said, God, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, loyal to his covenant and faithful to those who love him and obey his commandments, look at me, listen to me. That's exactly what he does when he realizes his restart is not what he thought it was going to be. He does this. He stops, he listens, sees what's going on. He stops and he mourns. He stops and he fasts. He stops and he prays. What Nehemiah does is he lifts the hood on his own life and he waits. He waits. And he mourns what will not be. We are not good in this culture at waiting and mourning. We are not good at lifting the hood. Because we cannot see where you're going when you lift the hood. Well, when you lift the hood and you can't see where you're going, the only thing you can do is stop. That's not popular these days. We are a stiff upper lip people. We've got it going on. We want to raise that lid, put it down, and get back to it. But the truth about life is it doesn't work that way for everyone. We sometimes fool ourselves into thinking that we can rush this process. We have this illusion that we're in control. We can rush grief. We can rush loss. But talk to anybody who has suffered a significant loss And they will tell you, you cannot, cannot stop grief. You cannot stop mourning. I'm curious how many of us in this room have really mourned the losses of the past few years. How many of us have raised the hood and stopped looking ahead only to sit in the pain of what has been and what is? Lifting the hood on our own lives forces us to pause. The pause, my friends, is so important. If we don't stop and pause, we cannot restart and be renewed. Then and only then, once we pause, lift the hood up, will we be able to gather our thoughts and live into the mystery of this whole being, body, mind, and spirit. In her book, Wild, we are witness to Cheryl Strayed and her own personal journey through grief and loss, the grief and loss of her mother. She stops her life full tilt, stops, because she can no longer function as an individual. She stops, and then and only after then does she step out into the wilderness, into the absolute unknown to do something she had never done before. And it was a place where she could truly find her way through grief and loss. Experts tell us we need to do the same thing with this post-pandemic world we live in. We need to stop. We need to consider what we've lost. And we need to just stop and keep the hood up for a little bit. The next thing that Nehemiah does and others do is he fasts. Nehemiah knows you cannot flood the engine of life to get it going again. 
He knows you have to clean out that carburetor. And for him, I'm sure it involved giving up food, giving up sleep. For us, we flood our lives with a variety of different things, right? From food to work to alcohol to doing to drugs to whatever it may be, to going all the time to the internet, to the email, to realizing it's our doing that makes us feel important rather than our being. Nehemiah fast to find his direction. Again, in her book, Restart, McGee says that the only way we can start to heal is to fast from doing. Just try being. She suggests we all consider the concept of this Buddhist practice. It's called beginner's mind. I'm sure some of you have heard about it. It's maintaining an open attitude, not filling the space with what you think or what you, you think a direction you're moving in is just simply a beginner's mind. And there's another practice she recommends. It's a Dutch practice, and I love it. It translate as, translates as the art of doing nothing. She says these practices, which she's recommending to younger adults, help you move to the place that you need to be for restart and renewal. Now, consider your own life. Are you filling up your life to avoid pain? It doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol. It can be work or shopping or food. What are you flooding your life with? Well, today is the day. Raise that hood. Pull off the lid of that carburetor and start looking at what keeps you running. And is it the best thing to keep you running? What is it that's rolling around there? Chances are you're like me and you need to clean some of that stuff out. You need to clean it out because your life has been flooded and you cannot restart, especially when you're the one who's providing the direction, which leads to the last point. It's only after we take these steps that we really can get down to that relationship that we have with the divine in that best way and direction. And the only way to build that relationship, just like any human relationship, is through communication and prayer. Pray for a restart. That is exactly what Nehemiah does here. He not only prays to God, but he reminds God, which I love, that God is faithful to the covenant or to the promise that God made to us. That God is faithful and God really wants the best for all of us. Now, this is where the real fun begins because for Chica, she only had one thing that she had to move forth in. She had to restart that engine and get me to wherever it was that was important for me to go to, like the Melody Inn or whatever other place we went to, or the Red Key or wherever it was. Anyway, (laughs) it was her job to get me there. And the only way to get there was to clean it out and to get it restarted because that's the promise she made when she was created. What is your promise? I mean this sincerely. Think about it. We believe that God has created each and every one of us with a divine purpose and meaning. Do you know what that is? Are you clear on what that is? I am not talking about the promise of being a good mother, the promise of being a good employee, the promise of being a good gardener, or the promise of being whatever it may be. I am talking about why it is that you have life and breath and movement. And if you sit here today not having any clarity around that, well, chances are that you need to take some of these steps. If you have clarity about it and your life isn't moving in a direction that you feel is moving you to a restart, a renewal, to be the person that you're called to be, then chances are that's your direction and your promise for your life and not necessarily the divine promises for your life. I want you to really think about this for a moment. And again, it's not only for you. It's so that you can share in conversation with somebody you know, because there is somebody in your life right now who is struggling. And you can't very well sit in the conversation with them unless you've taken the time to really think about these things. 
So today is the day. Lift up the hood. Pull out the carburetor. See what's flooding your engine. And then pray to God for the promise of a rich, full life. It's a day of restart. Time to stop and to grieve. Grieve for yourself, your kids, your grandkids, your country. Just wait with the hood up and I guarantee you that God will come. Just live into the pause for a few minutes and God will come. Maybe it's not any of these things that I have mentioned, but it's important for us to start living our lives instead of just oozing with great intention. Great intention. This morning I saw an African proverb and I put it on my Facebook page. It said, when death comes, may you be living. I love that. When death comes, may death interrupt my life. Whatever it is that's filling your life, it may not be the doing. It may be anger. It may be resentment. It may be something that you're holding against somebody else. Get rid of it so that you can get a fresh restart. Get rid of it so then and only then you can pray and share in the partnership with a God who loves you, who has a desire to connect with you, who has a desire to work in your life in ways of joy and peace and love. A God who loves you more than you'll ever know. It's time for a restart. Will you pray with me? God, help us to restart our engines Help us to be present with one another as we all do our best to head off in a direction that brings goodness into this world. God, today I do indeed pray for the young people in this world, for our children and young adults, all who know the pain of anxiety, fear, depression, self-consciousness. Help us to be present with others as they face grief, loss, and uncertainty. May we all have a willingness to share the journey in listening, loving, and being there for the great restart. Amen. Thanks. So today, I want to encourage you to be mindful of your own restarts and your desire to be in relationship with God. I am a firm believer that every good gift in my life is a gift from God. And it only means something if I share it with somebody else. As we share in our offering baskets, our harvest baskets today, be mindful of how God wants to restart your life and use you to help somebody in this world. I got plenty of something. What do I do?